Okay. All right, guys. Welcome back. We have done alpha 19 and alpha 20, right? We have learned much in the process. And today we're going to start out working on alpha 21. Okay. Alpha 21. Alpha 21 is a slightly different scenario. Okay. Let's see what's the difference. Okay. We have f of x equals to negative x squared plus 4x minus 3. Okay. So we have a negative a, right? So if we compare the if we compare the f of x equals to um, ax, ax squared plus bx plus c, where a cannot be zero, right? If we compare this form, right? This time, unlike in alpha 19 and alpha 20, a is negative. Okay, so in this case, A is negative. A is a negative one. And so we know that this concavity is different from the previous two. So when A is positive, the parabola opens up. When A is negative, opens up. Uh, when A is negative, it opens down or concave down. So this is the situation we have a concavity. Number two, question number two is concave down because A is negative one, which is less than zero, okay? So in, opens down. Okay, the first question, of course, the domain, right? We have, we still have 26 questions in the domain uh, uh, in alpha, alpha 21. And the domain, of course, is still all real numbers. All real numbers. Welcome back, everybody. Okay. And I, I know you guys are filing in, and we just started on alpha 21. Okay, it opens down. So let's look at the y-intercept. Okay, so please grab your paper pencil. Okay, we have done number 19 and number 20. So this question, I wish you guys to participate uh, much more, you know, actively. Okay, so have your paper pencil and ready to share your work with me anytime. Good morning, Marcelo. Okay. Very good, okay. So now, how do we find y-intercept? So we're gonna find y-intercept. We only have one y-intercept, right? So we know that to find y-intercept, we're gonna make the input equal zero. So that's gonna be zero, and that's gonna be zero. And we ended up with a negative three. So this is y intercept, remember, that's, we have talked about this, right? It's the vertical line, x equals zero, input equals zero, right? This line crosses the parabola. That's the meaning, okay? The vertically, so vertically, we cut the curve with y-axis. So that's how we get y-intercept. So x equals to zero crosses the parabola. And the point of intersection is zero comma negative three. Okay, I have given, we have the entire picture with us now, but right now we want you to put this point on the graph only, put the, the point on the graph only, okay? Put the points on the graph. So over time, we're gonna go through similar steps. So you're gonna see that we, um, 
we progressively put the points in place. We, put, we progressively put the points in place. Okay, forget about this y equals zero thing. Let's just initiate the software. And now we have a point, and this is the y intercept. Y intercept, zero comma three, uh, negative three, sorry, negative three. I'm gonna use a green because this is a vertical cut. Okay. And uh, making some adjustment to the view. Everybody should have a picture, should have a rectangular system in your, um, <clears throat> in your, um, on your paper, okay, rectangular system on your paper. And uh, here I'm gonna have negative 10, let's see, maybe negative 20 and uh, two, five. Okay, so we have this dot. This dot is zero, negative three, zero comma negative three. When input is zero, or x when x is zero, y is negative three. Okay, so next we're gonna do completing a square. Okay, let's do a completing a square. This is gonna be a little bit more involved algebraically. Okay, this is also the time for us to practice our algebraic skill. Complete a square. Complete a square. How do we complete this square? Okay, so I'm gonna show you for the first time because we probably have never seen something like this before. There's a number of different ways to do this. Okay, there are a number of different ways to do this, but we're still gonna use the principle number two, adding zero, okay? Before we add zero, and uh, we have we see there's a negative sign there. So I'm gonna take it out, the negative sign between these two terms. So I'm gonna have a negative sign and x squared, I basically factor out the negative sign. So this will become a minus four X. Negative three still stays outside. Okay, you can bring it inside if you wish, but I'm gonna leave it outside. Okay, and next step, inside the parentheses. Okay, I'm gonna add a number and subtract a number. I'm gonna add a number and then we'll subtract the same number to make a perfect square. So these three will make a perfect square. Okay, so how about I put a bracket, right? Put a bracket. So could you suggest to me what number shall we add and what number shall we subtract? What should that number be to make a perfect square? Okay, you can look at the perfect square tables. Okay, this is not a test, right? This is not a test. So what number should we, what number should replace the question mark? Hmm? What number should be replacing the question mark? Yeah. What number should replace the question mark? You can contribute on your um, on chat, or you can just speak up. Okay, I'm sorry, I cannot show you uh, my haircut. It just, Zoom says it doesn't recognize my uh, camera, doesn't, couldn't find my camera somehow. Okay, just a, so what number should we add or subtract? Hmm? 
What number should we add or subtract? Ah, oh, that's pretty ugly, isn't it? Zero comma negative three. But anyway, what number should be in the place of question mark? No answer. How about we take the half of four, half of four here, like we'd recognize the pattern, we make it two squared and we subtract a two squared. Do you guys follow me? Does everybody follow me? Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. Okay, you can find Y uh, from the table of perfect square. Okay, does everybody follow me? Okay, so next we're gonna regrouping these. So we added a zero, okay? The zero added is four minus four, basically. Okay, you can use four if you want makes no difference. And removing parentheses, you can see we add a four, subtract four. And four is two squared, how we get two, we take the four divided by two and the two, two squared is four. So add four, subtract four. Regroup these three numbers. And these three numbers make the perfect square, okay? That perfect square is X minus two squared. And we still have a minus two here. So we have a minus two here. Um, I'm sorry, minus four here, sorry, minus four. And there's a minus three outside. If you check those steps, okay, every step from every step, you should be able to go back to where we started. Okay, from every step, you should be go back, right? So if you check your steps, be careful, okay? These are the cases that we can easily make mistake. So every time you check your steps, you should be able to go back there. Okay, you should be able to go back there. Okay, so go forward, backward, we check our steps. We check our steps. Okay. All right, does everybody follow? Is everybody here? Okay, so now we're gonna complete the work. We're gonna complete the work. Almost, we are almost there. Okay, equal, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this negative sign and multiply this piece by negative sign. Okay, I still keep the squares, the perfect square there and multiply the negative sign with negative four. That's gonna be a plus four. Okay, so distributing the negative sign to each term, we consider this is two terms, one term, second term. Okay, so negative one times the perfect square, we have a negative X minus two squared and negative one times a negative four, we get a positive four. There's a still another negative three there. And once again, every step we go forward and we can go backward, okay? Be sure we always check our steps. Check steps along the way. Check steps along the way. So now we're done, okay, one more step. So we have a negative X minus two squared plus four minus three, then this turned into plus one, plus one. Okay, so let's look at the graph. Let's, let's look at the graph, let's graph it. Let's craft it, okay? Where do we start? We start from x squared, of course, okay? The graph of x squared, of course, we all know. Okay, so I'm gonna you know, clean up those uh, uh, arrows, okay? 
clean up. Now, we start from x squared. Let's just put this in the proper place. So that's our x squared, right? From x squared. That's x squared. And we're going to do a sequence of transformation. The next one we're going to do x minus two squared. So this will be a shifting to left or right, up or down. Does everybody follow me? So this will be a shifting, right, after x minus two squared, which direction will be shifting to? Left or right, up or down? It's to the right, right? So it's to the right. We're gonna make it green. Okay. And it looks like I need to make some adjustment. Okay, I'm gonna make some adjustment. So. Five to two, five still. And uh, so here I'm going to make it a negative five and 25. Okay, so it's a shifting from here. Okay, I'm going to make, make them the same scales. Okay same scales and over here this is negative five and that's a 25. 25. okay it's so a shifting to the right so shifting to the right does everybody follow shifting to the right and you see the vertex is shifted the vertex shifted right from the from the original zero zero which is, a, I'm gonna make it a black dot, is shifted with a green dot. The green dot is two comma zero. Now we're gonna make it green. Two comma zero, can you guys mark these points? Zero, zero shifted to two comma zero. Zero, zero shifted to two comma zero. Could you guys mark those? And the next shifting is going to be where? The next shifting is going to be negative x squared, x minus two squared. This is according to the order of operation, OK? So how do I figure this out? It is by order of operation. Okay, so this is this is this is the fundamental reason. Okay, by order of operation. So next we're gonna flip over because we have an x minus two squared, and then we have a negative. Uh, we have x minus two squared, and we put a negative sign in front of it. So when we do that, what do we get? And this picture will flip over. Oops, not, not, not that. Negative sign, x minus two squared, and flip. Okay, it's not the final step yet. So I'm gonna make a, a brighter green. It flipped over. It flipped over, okay. It looks like I'm gonna make some adjustment here. Okay, so I'm gonna make adjustment to have more space beneath the x axis. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. I want everybody to do that. Okay, so maybe negative 25, right? Negative 25. So this is gonna be negative uh, 25. And this all be adjusted to negative 25. Okay, and last but not least, okay, the most important one, we finally get to the final picture here. 
the final picture here, which is a shifted down by one unit, shifted down by one unit. The entire picture which we get from the lighter green. And finally, we get to, right, step by step, we get to the next picture. Okay, we're gonna make it red. We're gonna make it red, right? And that's gonna be, we're gonna look at the red. Red curve, the final curve, shifted up by one unit, okay? This is a little bit difficult to see, right? Because the whole picture shifted up. It looks like we're gonna, we need to just, we need to make some adjustment to our scale. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make some adjustment to our scale. So maybe this will be negative 10 and I make this 10 and uh, to see that will look better. Ah, that looks a little bit better, yeah? So the red curve is the final curve. So I'm gonna make one more adjustment, okay? So this piece, I'm gonna make a little less, okay? So, so maybe five. Okay, so the, all those, so I, I, and all of these shiftings, I'm gonna make it five. So this is five and this is negative 10, okay? So when you use your graphing calculator, some of, some of you probably do, right? Uh, you use your graphing calculator. You can make these adjustments along the way, along the way. So far so good. Does everybody follow? Okay, so, so this is the picture. This is the picture. The red one is the final one. The red, the red one is the final one. Of course, the picture you see in the, in the notes, in the handout is the final picture and the removed of all the other pictures. Okay, removed all of the other pictures, but you can see the movement of generating these pictures. From X squared, we do X minus two squared, which is a shifting to the right. By, by how many units? By two units, okay. So let's practice marking some points. And over here, the vertex is zero comma zero, right? And over here, the green, the green dots becomes two comma zero. And then we flip over, it's still two comma zero. And then we shift up, we shift up, right? We shift up by one unit. So what should that vertex be? Could you guys mark the vertex for me? What should be the vertex? Everybody, can you mark that vertex? And that should be two comma one, yeah? Is that two comma one? And that is the final vertex. That's a that's the final vertex. Okay, so we have completed the square. Completed the square. So this is the part I want you guys to do it over. Everybody, just to make sure everybody is on the same page. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to stop the share. I'm going to stop the share in a moment. And I want you to reproduce the completing square. Okay, you, I'm gonna give you five minutes to recomplete. This is the hardest part, okay? This is hardest part algebraically, okay? I want you to recomplete the perfect square and do all of these shiftings, do all of these shiftings and marking the vertex step-by-step. Step. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you guys ready? Can you say something? Yes, but that was a yes to something else, right, Marcelo? 
Are you guys ready? All right, go, go for it. I'm going to stop the share. And you are going to do the completing the square all over again. Okay, Just get a fresh piece of paper, get a new piece of paper. Okay. Try not to peek, try not to peek. Okay, ready, go. Three minutes has passed, but this is not a test, okay? Please take your time. If this is the moment you want to examine, did I really understand the steps, okay? And this is also recommended when you study by yourself, okay? Everything the teacher did in class, you should try to do it after class. Maybe close book, close notes. If you cannot do it, you, of course, you can go back to look at the notes. You can look at the textbook and stuff like that. But this is the place to identify where you really understand and where you don't understand. So this is the back and forth. This is how you study. 
Okay, you want to go through this process before the day of the exam, because on the day of the exam, it's too late. Right? On the day of the exam or on the day of the quiz, it's too late. Okay? So, are you guys almost there? All right, back to our screen, right? We did the completing a square. Do you guys have any questions when you're trying to do yourself? Can we do it by ourselves, right? These steps are particularly tricky. It's not meant to be tricky. It's not meant to be tricky though. We want you to understand. We want you to be able to do it. Any questions? <clears throat> Any questions? No? Yes, no questions, okay. Okay, you know that if you have any question, you can ask any time. Okay, all right. So we can see the tr the transformation from these transformation. You can see when we mark these points. When we mark these points, the line of symmetry. I added the line of symmetry. Okay, the original one was x equals zero, right? The original one was x equals zero. That's the y axis, and now. After the shifting, the line of symmetry becomes x equals to two, right? And it has been x equals two ever since. Has been x equals two ever since, right? So the horizontal shifting determines the line of symmetry and the line of symmetry is x equals to two, all right? So with that said and done, with that said and done, let's answer some of these questions. Okay, let's answer question number five. Okay, let's answer question number five. Okay, let's answer question number five. Now, okay, I want you guys to take the lead to answer question number five. What is the vertex? What is the vertex? Vertex is two comma one, right? It's right there, right? We shifted everything left, uh, right? Okay, we shift everything to the right, and then we shift everything, we flip everything over, and then we shift up. The end result is that the vertex is shifting along with it. And finally, the right, and up is the final decision, right? So right two units, up one unit, so the vertex is two comma one, okay? So how about the range? How about the range? The, the parabola opens down. So the range would be from negative infinity to positive one, okay? From negative infinity as low as possible all the way up to positive one, okay? That is in algebraic form. That is in algebraic form. What does that mean? It means this entire expression, okay? The output, will always be less than or equals to one for any real number. That's what it means, the output, right? If we consider all the possible input, which is all real numbers, 
And this function produces output. The output will always be less than or equal to one. That's what it means. Okay, that's what this picture says. Okay, and of course you can say uh, it's true for all of these statements because they're all the same. They're all the same. So i.e. the last one also tells us, okay, it's less than equals to one for all real numbers, you guys follow me. So that's the implication, that's the implication. So just simply understand this notation is not good enough. We really need to understand that every output is gonna be less than or equals to one. And when x equals to two, it's equals to one. You see that? Okay, when x equals to two, well, these are just, uh, you know, some special note, I want you to, to just pay attention to these details, right? Just pay attention to these details. The note is that when f of two, when you plug in two, right? When you plug in two here, or you plug in two here, right? You plug in two here. Is going to be equals to one exactly. So when x equals to two, all the output considered, you can reach the largest possible output. Okay, so of course that tells us what the maximum value, right? So that's the seven question number seven. Okay, maximum y value or minimum y value. Here we don't have a minimum because it could go as low as possible. And we have a maximum y value. Y value means the output. Maximum y value. The maximum y value is what? It's the same as f of two and it's the same as one. Does everybody that, that really follow me? Okay. Now draw the line of symmetry. Draw the line of symmetry. I have drawn, I, you know, I have drawn those line of symmetries. I want to give you just a second to draw your line of symmetry right here. Okay. And mark it. Okay, mark it, please. Mark your line of symmetry. x equals to two, I'm going to mark it at two, negative eight, with a green font. Okay, just, you know, to make sure everybody understands. Okay, so x equals two is the line of symmetry. Does everybody follow me? That's a line of symmetry, yeah? So you can, you maybe you should make some connections, right? When x equals to two, it reaches the highest point, the highest, the largest, the maximum, the uh, largest, the output. And x equals to two is also the line of symmetry. So, we, so x equals to is the equation of the line of symmetry. Does everybody follow me? Do you have any question? Because I'm using a lot of terminology, a lot of the terms, the words. Okay. Now, now, we have done the first nine questions. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? No? Are there any questions so far? No? All right. So now we can we can uh, we can probably you know bring our pictures together. 
right? We can um, we can remove some of those pictures, so some of those curves, because we we're, we're going to focus on this curve because we're going to focus on this curve. Okay, so just just wait for me to delete all of those. Okay, and uh, we have an. Uh, well, I'm going to delete that green one. Right, I'm going to be deleting that. And I'm also going to add the uh, Y intercept, right? The Y intercept, sorry. Okay, I'm adding my Y intercept, which is zero comma negative three, zero comma negative three. And I'm going to put that dot Wait, yeah, zero comma negative three. That's where it crosses the, yeah, that's the dot. Okay, that's the dot. So we have, so we have this Y intercept and uh, so we have all of these. Do you guys have any questions? Do you have any questions here? No? Okay, so we got our y-intercept, all oh, everything marked. You want to do this along the way so you know where we are. Okay, so zero comma negative three. So have all of these points line up. And now we're looking at this red curve. You can even make some adjustment. Okay, you can even make some adjustment. For example, I can make it six, make it six right? So hopefully that picture will give us a I'll give it, show us a little bit more. Hold on, what I'm trying to do. Oh, sorry, I was doing it at the wrong place. Okay, I'm gonna making, I'm making some adjustment and uh, the axes I'm gonna make it say, say eight. So that's the picture. I even, uh, and I'm gonna make one more adjustment for this picture, okay, just to, uh, okay. Any questions so far? No questions. Okay. Number 10. Number 10. Number 10. Okay. You can, you can ask question anytime. Okay. You can ask question anytime. Number 10, X intercepts. We have multiple, it looks like we're gonna have more than one here. X-intercepts. X-intercept is the horizontal cut, right? It's the y-axis. We know that X-intercepts, okay, just to remind you that we have done this before, is the X-axis or Y equals zero, okay? The equation of x axis is y equal to zero, aka the x axis okay. The x intercept is the y equals zero line. Horizontal line crosses the parabola. And we want to know, we want the crossings. We want the crossings. It may cross it more than once. And in this case, they cross more than once. So we're looking for those X intercepts. Okay, so these crossing. Okay, so the crossing, I'm gonna use red, broken line, maybe a little thicker, okay, to emphasize that crossing. And we're interested in these two points. We're interested in these two points. How do we find these two points, right? How do we find these two points? Can you guys take the lead and try to see if you can find these two points? Would you guys take the lead to find these two points? What do we do?
All right, so we're setting, we're gonna be setting f of x equals zero, right? We have f of x. So we have these completed a square, okay? I'm gonna choose, okay? So because it's a crossing between y, uh, y, equals zero, uh, y equals zero and the parabola, so that's basically setting f of x equals zero. Okay, or you're setting this guy equal to zero. You're setting this guy equal to zero. You're setting this guy equal to zero, right? Now, all of these settings, which one do you think we're gonna choose? You can use any one, really, you can use any one. You can use this one, you can use the last one, you can use any one in, in the middle. So far, we have been using the last one. We've been using the last one. Okay, so we're using the last one. We're setting that equals to zero. That's, just, that's what's setting y equals zero. We're setting the output equals zero, right? To find x intercept, we, we want to find the input and where output is our zero. So we're going to solve this equation for x. Okay. We're going to solve this equation for x. And from this equation, we're going to subtract one on both sides. Well, you can add the perfect square on both sides. Okay, so either way, you're going to get x minus 2 squared equals 1. Okay, so I'm adding. x squared plus x minus two squared on both sides. Okay, so consequence of adding, I put it on this line. Okay, we add x minus two squared on both sides, so we get this. Any question, any questions so far? No question? Okay, and then we're gonna take square root as we always do, right? So far, okay, we've been doing these alphas this, this way. This is not the only way though, okay? This is not the only way. The square root of one is one, so we don't need to do anything on that side. And then absolute value, wait, sorry. Absolute value of x minus two is equal to one. And then, and we're familiar with these steps, right? x minus two equals two plus one or minus one. And adding two on both sides, so we get x equals to two with adding two on both sides plus minus one. So it looks like we have two numbers, but we should, right? We anticipate it. So one is two minus one, and the other one is x sub two equals to two plus one. Of course, two minus one gave us one, two plus one gave us three, and we're gonna separate them by comma. You can say or, you can say or, right? So these are the two solutions. So have we found the x-intercept? Right? We just have to compose our x-intercept. Okay, we just have to compose our x-intercept. We have one x-intercept, second x-intercept, and they're ordered pair, right? They all have the same output, and the input would be one, three. One, three. Okay, so this, these two points now we can mark. We can mark these two points now. We mark these two points now. Let's mark these two points. Let's mark these two points. Okay, so I'm gonna mark these two points. Could you mark them with me? That's red. 
three comma zero, write these two dots and mark these points on the graph. One comma zero. Okay, I'm gonna mark it at zero point two the red dot. I'm using red dot. See how that do, how, how that works. One comma zero, I should move it over a little bit, right? One comma zero. Uh, 0 0.5, hope that will do it. Good, that's better, right? One more point I'm gonna mark, three comma zero. So that's my, um, second x intercepts my second x intercept and i'm going to mark it with red just to you know to mark it properly to mark it properly okay so we have the vertex we have the x intercepts marked we have the y intercept marked the line of symmetry mark these will be the typical requirements when you graph a quadratic, you should mark all of these points, okay? These, these are the points you must mark if they are. If they are. Of course, sometimes we'll see in the example, the x-intercept does not exist, but that's a quite a different story. And this is how you mark your picture. This is how you mark your picture. Okay, so we got the x-intercepts, yeah? Okay. So let's look at the, the pairs of questions, right? We've done this often time. We have done this many, many times. Okay, uh, 11 and 12. Could I ask you guys to do 11 and 12? 12, evaluate f of zero once again, right? f of zero. Okay, solve the equation. Solve the equation f of x equals zero for x. By this time, I think we, we everybody understand these very well, yes? Does everybody understand these very well? Horizontal cut, vertical cut, vertical cut, horizontal cut, you can tell the difference, right? Yes. So now I want you guys to work on 11, 12 as a pair, 13, 14 as a pair, 15, 16 as a pair, 17, 18 as a pair. Okay. So you have any question. Okay, so 11, 12 as a pair, 13, 12 as a pair. A 13, 14 as a pair, that's for one. And uh, 15, 16 as a pair. We have a two here. Four X. And 17, 18 as a pair. Seventeen, eighteen as a pair. And this time it was negative three, and that was a negative three. If you have any questions so far, like if you have any questions so far. No questions, okay? So go through the, the algebraic steps. Go through the algebraic drills. Okay, there's 21, alpha 21.
f of zero, of course, familiar, been there, done that, right? Okay, solve for f of x equals zero, been there, done that. Okay, that's just same question. Same question. Okay, because it's solving for x, you actually don't have to give the x intercepts. It's not necessary. Okay, for f of one, we have this negative one square. Algebraically, you need to be a little bit careful. Okay, you need to be a little bit careful when you plug in numbers. Okay, so x squared, that's a minus x squared plus four times one minus three and that equals to negative one, then this is actually equals to zero. Okay, so f of one equals zero, f of x equals one, and this that's gonna be this guy equals to one. Okay. The function with the completed square form equals to one. Okay, and in that case, we have, we solve this equation and we subtract one on both sides. So we're gonna get equal zero and we multiply by negative one on both sides. So we're gonna get X minus two squared equals to zero. Um, so in this case, X minus two squared is zero, a number time itself. This number time itself is zero. So X minus two must be zero and uh, X must be two. Okay. So when F of X equals to one, we're solving for X. We have only one solution, one solution only. Well, this, does, this should not surprise us. Right? Why this doesn't surprise us? Doesn't surprise us. Because by drawing this f of x equals to one, okay, we have a horizontal cut. This horizontal cut is the horizontal line one. Okay. And this line cut the cut the parabola. Okay, so this is the y equals to one. This is the y equals to one. Right? This is y equals to one. So y equals to one. When you use a horizontal line, cut the same level of the vertex. There's only one, only one touch. Okay, it touched the curve at only one point. So this is another interesting phenomenon, right? So I'm going to mark this here. As you guys are moving along, you're going to see these very interesting phenomena <clears throat> because I have chosen different points for a cut. Okay, so these are the uh, the cuts, horizontal cut, y equals to one. So y equals to one is cutting the curve. It meets at only once. So, okay, so I'm gonna write it in words. Y equals to one crosses the parabola at one point. That one point is it happens to be the vertex. Okay, 
So proceed f of two, right? Proceed f of two. So negative two squared plus four times two, sorry, plus four times two minus three, okay? So that give us negative four and that's a positive eight. So that's a positive four, positive four minus three, that's a one. Okay, so f of two is one. f of two, and of course it's a vertical cut, right? It's a vertical cut. f of two is a vertical cut, which is right here, right? It is the vertex, it is the vertex, isn't it? You know, I'm choosing these points just to tease you guys. Right, just to tease you guys, it's a, it's a process, we understand, it's a process. So when we solve this equation, right? So we ended up solving f of x equals to two on 16, um, sorry, 16. When we do that for the 16, that's equals to two. Okay, f of x equals to two. That's number 16. Horizontally, 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 okay? I'm gonna draw a horizontal line on here. I'm gonna draw a horizontal line here. Horizontal line, y equals to two, Red. Okay, it's a line broken. I'm gonna make it thinner. Oh, well, it's okay. We can make a medium, medium thick. And this line is y equals to two. And you can see when we cut it, what happens? No touch, no touch, no touch. So there's no point. There's uh, we should have no real number solutions, right? So you're gonna see a, an algebraic uh, phenomena, okay? You're gonna see an algebraic phenomena. Okay, so let's mark that y equals to two. Okay, I'm gonna put x equals to five and this is 2.2, y equals to two cutting. Okay, so we're back, back and forth with all these algebraic geometry just to understand what we're doing here. Okay, so when f of x equals to two, solving that equation, okay, from the geometric feature, we, we know that there's, there should be no real number solutions. Okay, so let's confirm it with our algebraic operation, right? So we're solving this equation for x, Right, solving for x, solving for x from, from these. Oops, sorry, from here. Okay, what do we get? We're gonna subtract one on both sides. So we, we're gonna end it up with equals to positive one, okay? If we multiply by negative one on both sides, and we're gonna get x minus one, my x minus two squared equals to negative one. And if we take a square root, what happens? We take square root on both sides, what happens? And we encounter complex number, okay? We encounter complex numbers. So as we learn that, Whenever complex numbers show up, that means no touch, no touch. So this equals to I. Okay, sorry, this is a negative one in square root. Let me write it down properly so it doesn't confuse anybody. So that equals to I. So whenever I show up, so whatever you do, it tells you no touch because we're working with a real number system, the rectangular system deal with a real number only. One is, when it comes to complex number, no touch, no solution. So to continue, sometimes 
you may want to know the complex number solution as well. So in that case, you just keep it going. X minus two equals to I. Okay, then you get X minus two equals to plus I or minus I. So in the end, when we add a two on both sides, you get X equals to two plus minus I. So this equation has a solution, but it's a complex number solution. Okay, then you say the equation. Okay, what equation? This equation, i.e. this equation, right? So this equation, okay, has no real number solutions. It has two complex number solutions. Okay. But you can also say that the, the line y equals to two does not touch the parabola. No touch. So all of these is part of the narrative. It's part of the narrative. Got it? No touch. Now, 1718. 1718. For 1718, we need to be a little bit careful algebraically when you operate this. Okay? Our function, our function is, is a negative x squared plus 4x minus 3. And I, it has a, a perfect, uh, has a form with perfect square in it. Why we have these? When you plug in, you can plug in any one you want. When we plug in, we can plug in any one we want, but we must be careful. We must be careful. For example, when we plug in the negative three in this, you have to just replace the X by negative three. So you need to enclose a parentheses. And this X replacing by negative three, you put a parentheses. If this parentheses is missing, that's a, that's spelled disaster. That's spelled disaster. You're gonna get the entire number wrong. Okay. So now we must have this parentheses. Now, moving forward, when we do the calculation, we have a negative sign. So you're gonna do the exponents first, and negative three times negative three. That's a nine. So that's a positive nine. And four times negative three. That's a negative twelve. And minus three. So in the end, we get, what do we get? We get negative 24. Get negative 24. So this vertical cut, that is, okay, x equals to negative three, that vertical line, okay, input equals negative three, crosses the parabola at what? At a point. That point is negative three, negative 24. Okay, let's see if we can, we can plot that point in our picture, okay? So let's do that. So I'm gonna take this picture. Okay, we have come this far. Okay, well, x equals to negative three. Negative three is right here, right? And there's a point of intersection, which is negative, negative three, 20, negative 24. This picture, you know, we did not include that big picture. So we have to make some adjustment. We need to make some adjustment. Okay, I need to include negative 24. So I, I have a negative 25 on the scale and to see if that will work there. Okay, so when I draw that vertical line, x equals to negative three, 
Okay, I'm drawing the negative uh, line. Okay, negative, to negative three, I'm drawing that vertical line. Cross the curve, boom, there it is. And that point is right there. That point is right there. I'm gonna make it a green dot there. Okay, and of course we want to mark that point. We want to mark that point. Do you guys follow me? So far so good. So we need to make a little adjustment. Okay, so sometime. Okay. Okay, so that's negative 23, negative three, negative. And I'm going to mark that point just to, you know, just to, I just to identify some points here. Okay, just for the fun of it. Negative three, negative 24, that's the point, that's the point. Last pair. 1819. 1819. So far, so good. Anybody has any questions? So after this, we're gonna we're gonna take a break. Okay, is this too long? Yeah, I know. It's pretty long. Do you have any questions? Is that 1817? Did I wait, 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 wait. 1718. Sorry, 1718. We just did 17, I'm sorry. We just did 17, okay? We just did 17. We just did 17. Let's look at 18, okay? 18, f of x equals to negative three. This is f of x equals to negative three. Okay, f of x is negative three. The output is a negative three. And of course, we still choose that one with perfect square to use it, right? So we use this equation. And we know this is a horizontal line of x equals to, uh, you know, for uh, y equals to negative 3. y equals to negative 3. So we use that horizontal line to cut our parabola. Boom, it actually meets a overlap. One of the crossing is exactly the y-intercept. We just need to find another point. We just need to find another point, okay? So now let's find these two points by solving these equations, okay? And we're gonna, of course, subtract one on both sides, right? Subtract one on both sides. We get negative four on the other side. If we multiply both sides by, if we multiply, multiply both sides by negative one, negative, negative makes positive. So we get positive four here. Okay. Taking square root. I bet you guys are tired. Okay. I'm going to take a break very quickly. Just in a second. Okay. Let's finish that. So it's square root of four. Square root four, of course, equals to two. So we ended up with absolute value, x minus two equals to two. And x minus two equals to plus two minus two. And this tells us x has two values, so this is two plus two minus two, right? have two numbers here, x sub one, x sub one is two minus two, that's a zero, right? And x sub two equals to two plus two, that's gonna be four. So the point of intersection, okay? So the point of intersection, so what is the point of intersection? 
So y equals to negative three, this horizontal line crosses the parabola at two points. One point is one point is zero comma negative three, and the other point is four comma negative three. That's what we found. Okay, of course, zero comma negative three that coincides with the with the um, you know with the y intercept. Okay, so I'm going to put this picture. I'm going to bring this under. Uh, actually, I'm going to bring it to the next bring it to the side. Okay, and I'm going to put these two points on the graph. Of course, one of the points is already there, right? One of the points is already there. So I'm not going to, I don't need to mark it. And I only have one more point to mark. Okay, zero comma negative three is already marked. I just have to mark at this point, this point, and then we're going to take a break. Okay, this point is four negative three. And uh, I'm going to mark it at four, negative three. And uh, it's going to, doesn't matter, red or green, not anymore. There. Play. Four, comma, three. A four, comma, negative three. The negative three is not so clear. So I'm going to just make a little adjustment. Okay. So negative. Ah, that's even worse. Uh, I'm going to make that to be negative four. How about that? Ah, a little improved. Hmm. about that? Better, better. I'm going to make it a even better. Okay, I'm going to make it even better. Uh, maybe 3.5. Just making these adjustments here. Okay, a little bit better. Let me make it better yet. Okay, so let's take a break and come back and I uh, come back at 12. Okay, come back at 12. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna still making this adjustment here ah, to make it better, to make it better, okay? Then that negative three can be adjusted. Ah, let's make it even better. There. Please be good. A ah, little bit better. You see, it takes a lot of work to get this done right, right? There, that was the last one, last time we're gonna try. Okay, so this turned out to be okay. So we have done all the way up to 18. So take break, come back at 12. Back at 12. Okay. So I'm gonna pause the recording. Welcome back. Okay. All right. So we get this. Uh, we got. We got these pictures. I, I hope these doesn't confuse anybody. Okay. It could. If you keep following my steps, it should be okay. But. Um, uh, but do you have any questions? Okay, so we done 18. Okay, we've done one through 18. No questions. Okay, so now start with, from number 19. 19. Okay, 19. 
19 says solve for x, right? Where f of x equals to negative x squared plus 4x minus 3, we want that to be greater than 0. What does this mean? Do we still remember? We, do we know what to do? So which one of these pictures do you think will be most fitting and the simple, probably a simple one, right? We need a simple picture we did, right? I think I'm gonna take this picture and uh, maybe trim a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna trim the picture. Okay. I'm gonna trim the picture and uh, adjust the scale because I really don't need the, the vertex and I don't need the vertical and I don't need the X intercepts either. Okay, so I don't really need a lot of those things. Okay, so I'm gonna remove them. So I'm gonna remove the, 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 the uh, the vertex, I'm going to remove that, uh, I'm going to remove that uh, Y intercept as well. I really only needed the, in the picture would be, you know, I would, I don't need the, the vertical line. I don't need the, the green dot and I don't need the vertex. I need the x-intercept, so I remove the vertex, okay? I think I removed a lot of things. And I'm gonna remove that. The, the, the reason I wanna show you this is that when you consider greater than equal to zero, less than zero, you really don't need those other things, okay? You don't really need the other things. And for me, we just need a circle or, um, we obviously need a circle here, okay, for one zero and three comma zero. These are the x-intercepts. That's all we need. That's really all, that is really all we need because we want to know when the output will be positive in this case. Do you guys follow me? I can even make this scale a little bit better for, for us to see, okay, and marking. So I'm going to adjust the scale, maybe from just from negative five to three to two will work, right? To see how that works. Ha. And the x direction, I can adjust it from negative two to. Five. Just, just, I'm just making, I want to make the picture more visibly showing uh, which part is positive, which part is negative. So you, now we're going to look at 19, 20, 21, 22, look at these four questions. All of these four questions, they're just asking different aspects of it, right? So I want you guys to try to write down the solution. And I'm going to put this answer in a, a form of summary. Okay, I'm going to put the answer in the form of summary. Okay, while you guys are working on it. Greater than equals to less than less than equal to, right? So I'm going to put this in a summary. Okay, for Greater than zero, solve for x. Ah. The next one, greater than equal to zero. Solve for x. Huh. And the next one, Less than zero. Huh. So for X. Huh. 
x. This is going to be less than zero. Okay, why is it beeping? I don't know why it's beeping. Okay, I'm going to make this font just a little bit smaller so we can enclose everything. Okay, so this is the picture. Okay, of course, we're still missing that less than or equal to zero. Less than or equal to zero, right? Less than or equal to zero. So for less, for greater than zero, let's see. We want this, we want the output to be greater than zero, right? Okay, we want the output to be greater than zero. So what will be the solution? The solutions really are just numbers there in the middle, right? Yes, so the solution would be x is larger than one, smaller than one, three. That's all, that's the solution. Okay, and just to re enhance our understanding, right? We want the output to be what? We want a positive output. Positive. Whoops, where did it go? We want a positive output. Okay, ah, positive output. Is that clear, everybody? Okay, I know you guys are still working on it. Keep working at it. And this time it will be dots. Dot, dot. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, draw these. One more thing, so that's uh, one comma zero, three comma zero line, big, solid. Okay, so this one other one would be. Okay, and for these other two, which is less than zero. Okay, less than zero. It will be the outside. It will be the outside. So these will be gone. Wait, I didn't delete it, sorry. Delete it. Okay, and add items. And one more piece, one more piece. Three comma zero, 10 comma zero, thick. Okay, last but not least. And the circle turning to dots. Circle turn into dots. And solution. Okay, so this solution will be one less than or equal to x less than or equal to three. And these will be x is less than one or X is greater than three. Last one, of course, is less than or equal to the place of comments and 
greater. So this is a comparative study I wish to show you guys. Does everybody follow? Yeah? And number 23, number two through number 26, they are similar, right? So that's going to be, uh, let, let me complete this table, okay? For your record, for your record. So let, let's uh, zero or positive or zero, right? Positive or zero, right? So on this other part, it would be, we want a negative output. Right, we want the negative output, and we want positive output, right? Just to be consistent. And this one, we want negative output or zero output, right? Or zero output. Hope everything is clear to everybody. Is it? Is it pretty clear to everybody? Yeah? So far, is it good? And the 23, 24, 25, 26, those are basically variations I created. And there are many more variations, okay? But for all of those variations, you can, work them out by make it, you know, make one side to be zero and work with whatever. And sometimes you may even get a new quadratic function, new look, that's okay. In nature, yeah, it, it's, there are a lot of similarities. There are a lot of similarities. Okay, so there are some variations. Okay, do you guys think you can handle those variations? Yeah. I don't want to use the word variance because variance these days sounds like a little viral, right? So I'm not going to use that word. I'm going to use that word. All right. So we did a 21, okay? A complete set of 21, okay? We're kind of uh, assuming you guys can do 23 through 26. So you do have homework to do, which you're going to do everything from the beginning to end. And next, I do want to take you guys to the next one, alpha 22, alpha 22. Okay, alpha 22 is another example that a parabola opens down, a parabola opens down, okay? But this time I want you guys to be more involved. I want you guys to be more, even more involved. I know you guys are very much involved. So we want, to, we want you to be even more involved. Okay, so let's do this alpha 20. Alpha 22, okay, so I'm gonna increase the funds. So let's look at alpha 22. Are you ready to take the lead? You may think of these questions are pretty long. Yes, these questions are pretty long, but if you understand every aspect of it, Okay, a lot of things will become much easier and simpler. Okay, the same ideas and a lot of those things we do here, such as how to find y intercept, how to find x intercept, and what, you know, when is a vertical cut, how is a horizontal cut. All of these features are actually universal for all of the functions. Okay, for radical functions, for functions that you will be learning in the future, like in trig, in trig classes or logarithm uh, functions, they're all similar. They're all similar in nature and in treatment, in mathematical treatment. So if you understand these particular details and then you really would have understand a lot and you'll be much more at ease, you'll be much more at ease. Okay, so let's go down the list to work this out, to work this out, okay? 
Uh, domain, what is a domain? Are you guys bored? Hope not. Okay, every question I put in here, there, there's there are a lot of similarity, but there's also some nuances. There's some nuances, okay, especially from completing a square perspective. Okay, you're gonna have a little changes, and this will I hope will enhance your algebraic skill. And obviously, this is a concave down. Okay, we go down this list very quickly. Three y intercept. Okay, y intercept. So what is the y intercept? F of x equals two. You're gonna substitute the input with a zero. Right, so that's zero. And that's a zero. And we get a positive three. Okay, so y intercept is a zero comma three. And we understand this is where, okay, x equals to zero. This vertical line crosses the parabola at, at what? At this point, zero comma three. Okay, that a vertical cut, that's a vertical cut, okay. Four, completing a square. Do you think you want to try this time first? Yeah? Would you like to complete the square? Try to complete the square first. Would you like to take the lead? If you don't get it, that's okay, but I want you to give it a try. Okay, could you please give it a try? You can look at the notes. This is not a, you know, this is not an exam. Right? You can look at the notes. You can look at what you have done before. We have done before together, right? You're gonna try to put these together, <clears throat> completing a square. Completing a square. Try it. it just, you're not going to have any penalty. Okay. You're going to learn. Oh, where do I need? Do I know how to do this? Where did I? What did I missed? Right. What did I missed? Are you ready for me? Are you ready for me? Still trying? Still trying, good. Take your time.
Did you work out the uh, perfect square? Did you guys work out the perfect square? All right, I think we, it's time that we converge. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, uh, I might be doing this differently from yours, so don't be alarmed. You may be just as correct, okay? So I'm doing, um, I'm gonna factor out the negative sign, which is a negative one, plus four X, and I'm leaving the three outside. And inside the bracket, the, the parentheses, I'm gonna turn that into brackets just for, you know, for convenience because I'm gonna insert some more um, stuff. I'm gonna add a four minus four, right? So this looks like a perfect square we're gonna familiar, we're gonna be rather familiar with, and I'm gonna regroup. And with this, with this done, and I'm going to put it, you know, this is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. This is a perfect square of x plus two. So x plus two squared. And then I'm gonna distribute the negative sign. I'm gonna distribute the negative sign. So I'm gonna have negative of x plus two squared. And the negative sign distributed to negative four, that's gonna be a plus four and plus a three that was there before. So in the end, in the end, I would have a plus seven. We'll have a plus seven. Okay, so let's, let's do the shifting. Let's do the shifting transformation, you know, about this curve, okay, from x squared, from x squared, okay? So that's our x squared as always. Okay, we're gonna make adjustment later. Okay, we're gonna make adjustment later. Okay. From x squared. Okay, I'm gonna put it this way. So x squared on top. And the transformation. The next movement will be x plus two squared. Right? And the next movement will be uh, x plus two squared and put a negative sign in front of it. And the last, and of course, is gonna be this guy, finally. So all of these shifting, I want you guys to do the shifting. Could you guys do the shifting, please? Shifting. From x squared to x plus two squared, is it shifting left or right? Let me see, anybody respond? Anybody responded? Is it left or right? Left or right? Yeah? Is it left or right? Right? It's x plus two squared. Remember we did x squared, x plus one squared, x minus one squared. So this one is shifting to the left or shifting to the right? to the left, okay? The green is shifted to the left. All right, so let me, let me set the scale. Okay, so the green is shifted to the left. Okay, it's a plus two shift to the left. You remember those pictures? Okay, so let me, let me, let me open up the, those pictures and I, I just want to, uh, on March 17, okay? Remember we did those pictures, didn't we? Uh, 
Remember we did these pictures? Remember we did this picture, this, remember we did this pictures. This, the black one is X squared, yeah? What's the green one? The green one is X plus one squared. It's shifted to the left by one unit. And this other one is X minus one. Remember those points we plotted, you guys, huh? You should go watch those again and redo it by yourself, okay? And do it by, your, by yourself, okay? Remember the point we plotted and that whole process, okay? One is a plus two and X plus two, is it gonna be shifted to the left, the further left, left? Uh, that's what we did, okay? Did you get it? So this green is, is a, the shifting to the left from X squared. And then we have this negative X squared, a negative X plus two squared, yeah? Negative X plus two squared, what, what would it be? Oh, sorry, uh, not this one, okay. It's gonna be a flip, right? So it's gonna be a flip. Oops, okay, so negative X plus two squared is gonna be flipping and I'm gonna use a lighter green. Flip down, flip down, okay. So that's a negative X plus two squared. And last one, shifting up or down. It's a plus seven, it's shifting up or down. It's shifting up by four units, by seven units. Okay, so this final one, I'm gonna make it red. Boom, so this is the red, okay? So now I'm gonna make some adjustment to this uh, so you can see better, okay? So now I'm gonna make some adjustment on the scales. So uh, the scales, we're gonna make it say negative five, maybe this will be three, and maybe this is a negative two, 12, oh, 10. Is that better? Okay. So I'm gonna use the same scale, negative five, three, negative eight, 10, negative five, three, negative eight, 10, okay. Negative five, three. Negative eight. Ten. Oops. Look at that, what happened? Oh, never mind. Sorry, negative eight ten. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, one more. Okay, two more. Okay. So those are negative five three, negative five three, and negative eight ten. Okay, so that's a shifting. The next one, so negative five, three. I'm just making the just adjustment of the scale. Do you guys follow me? Am I too slow? So let's look at those shifting. Okay, I want you guys to do some marking. Okay, so we can identify the vertex. Okay, we're gonna do some marking to identify the vertex. And the line of symmetry, okay? And the line of symmetry. So this point, that's, that was the vertex, okay? Zero comma zero. 
and that was shifted to the left, right? X plus two shifted to the left. And that's gonna be what? Negative two comma zero. Okay, flip over. It doesn't change, the vertex didn't change. It's still negative two comma zero. Okay, and shifted up by seven units. So this final spot of the vertex, okay? And that point is what? Is negative two, positive seven. Could you please write it down? Do you follow me? Do you have any questions? Do you follow me? Do you have any questions? Yeah? Any question, please? Left, right, up and down. Yeah? Yes? So please write them down. Okay, so after all these transformation, we got the final curve and this is our final curve. Okay. So far so good? Any questions, everybody? Could you, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate. I'm so sorry, I, I cannot start the video for some reason. Uh, Zoom still doesn't identify my camera, my uh, web, webcam. So I cannot show you my nice haircut. That's too bad, okay? All right, so, so these are the points. And how about line of symmetry? The line of symmetry, what will be the line of symmetry? Hmm? What is the line of symmetry? When do you think the line of symmetry has been decided? Yeah, on the horizontal shift, right? On the horizontal shift. Okay, that line of symmetry. That line of symmetry, that line of symmetry has never moved, right? That line of symmetry has never moved ever since that movement, ever since that movement. Okay, so that line of symmetry stays there. Okay. Never moved. The line of symmetry has never moved. You see, all I did is just copy and paste into the line of symmetry. So what is the equation of the line, the line of symmetry, right? So now we're about to answer all of these questions. We're gonna, we are about to answer all of these questions. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right. Vertex, what is the vertex? Negative two, seven, right? The vertex is negative two, seven. So let's identify that point. Let's identify that point. Flip over. 
five, which is the vertex. Five is the vertex. Negative two, positive seven. Okay. Negative two, positive seven. Okay. You just have to figure out the number that make the perfect square zero. And that number is negative two. Do you guys follow me? That number is negative two. And that's going to be the first coordinate, x coordinate, input coordinate of the vertex. And the other number is just whatever it is outside the perfect square. So negative two, seven. And you can also see from these transformations, right? This is shifting to the left. So this is a vertical line, okay? Which is x equals to negative two has never moved. It has never moved. Ever since that shifting, Okay. It's never moved, right? That's the place. So that's x equals negative two. So I'm gonna make it green just to show you that, you know, that vertical line equation is x equals negative two. How do I identify the negative two? is from here. Whatever number make the perfect square equal zero, that's gonna be negative two, because if you replace X by negative two, it's gonna make a zero. So this number, that negative two is gonna be the line of symmetry. Okay, that's the lowest point, okay? So in this case, at the highest point, the highest point. So finally, the line of symmetry stay the same, right? And the vertex is negative two, seven. So I'm gonna make that a little red dot. And we're gonna mark that point. And we're gonna mark that point. Could you guys mark those points? Does everybody follow me? I hope you guys are not uh, too confused because I don't wanna leave you behind. Am I too slow or am I too fast? Huh? Yes? Am I too slow or am I too fast? Guys? I'm going pretty fast. Is that everybody's opinion? So do you wish me to slow down? Can you keep up with me? I'm going fast, but can you keep up with me? Okay, so where do you want me to slow down? Do you want, is there any spot you want me to go back to? If you cannot tell me where I, can, I should go back to, I will, I will go at a slower pace. I will try. And for you, after class, you may want to watch this again. OK, you may want to watch this again. OK, so anywhere you want me to go back to, Marcelo. No, not yet. OK, I will try to slow down a little bit. OK, but just remember, the lectures are recorded if there's any place that you need to watch again, just feel free to go back there to watch again. Okay, so we did the perfect square. I, I would imagine this is the hardest part. <clears throat> this is the hardest part algebraically, okay? How do I know? Well, from my teaching experience, from my teaching experience. If it's not the case, that's fine. If it's not the case, um, that's fine, that's fine. But Usually the algebraic part is the, the difficult part, is the difficult part, okay? But feel free to let me stop or pause, okay? So we have the vertex and this picture, we can put it away, okay? This is just to remind us, okay? When we should shift left or shift right, okay? So vertex is five, uh, uh, negative two, seven, 
So can we tell the range? What is the range? If you look at this picture, if you look at this picture we did, right? If we trim all the unnecessaries, right? If we trim all the unnecessaries. Okay, so I'm gonna remove the green, remove the greens. And uh, what else should I remove? Okay, let's see what happens. Yeah. So this is the curve. This is the final curve, right? So if I ask you, what is the what is the perf? Uh, what is the um, what is the range? What can you tell me? What is the range of this function? The range is about how high it can go, how low it can go, right? The range, obviously, this opens down. The range would be from negative infinity to seven, because seven tells the height. Seven tells the height. Okay, but there are other versions of these to explain this, right? That is, I always wanna put these in the interpretation, right? So we have this function and we have all of these, all of its variations. We have all of its, its variations. What does that mean? It means the output, okay, let me write it down, the output, is less than or equal to seven for any input, for any input X, that's what it means. So this graph, this interval means the output is less than or equal to seven for any input. In particular, this means that this guy is less than or equals to a seven for any real number X, for any X, okay? It also means for this guy, okay? Because it is also equals to F of X, right? So all of these in the middle is less than or equals to seven for all of these, really, that's all implied because they're all the same. Do you guys follow me? No matter what form you take it. So they all mean the same thing. Okay. And of course, you know that we, we don't use the, 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 the things in the middle. We don't use very much of the things in the middle, but you can, you certainly can, but that's what it means. You follow me? You, no matter what number you plug in, the, the output is always gonna be less than equals to seven. When it is seven, the question is when it is seven, when X equals to negative two, it is seven. So at the input equals to negative two, the maximum is seven achieved achieved, okay? And now we're gonna use the two popular forms, okay? So this guy or, you know, that guy, that's equals to, you know, so all of these are the same thing. We're saying the same thing, okay? So I'm elaborating this because I really want, to, I want you to understand it's, this picture is just telling you, right? No matter what is the input, your output will never be exceeding seven. It will never be higher than seven. It can be seven or lower, but it will never be higher than seven, okay? And in particular, question number seven is to capture that moment that we reach the maximum, okay? We do have a maximum. We have the highest point we can reach the maximum, okay? When does it reach the maximum? 
okay? We have a maximum Y value. Maximum Y value means maximum output. Maximum Y value slash maximum output. And maximum output is seven. Okay, when does it achieve it? It's achieved at negative two. So when input is negative two, okay, when input is negative two, the output reaches its maximum. Okay, so all these interpretations, do you guys hear me? I know you might be tired at this point of the class, okay? But when you cannot make a narrative out of this, maybe you want to come back to the lecture. Maybe you want to come back to the lecture. It's very, very important to understand this. Okay. All right. So let's see, let's look at the line of, let's draw the line of symmetry. Can you draw the line of symmetry? Right. And what is the equation of the line of symmetry? What is the equation of the line of symmetry? We just marked it, right? We just marked it on the picture. Can you give me the line, the equation of the line of symmetry? Well, it's at the input of negative two, when you have the, when you reach the maximum or minimum, in this case is maximum here, the equation of line of symmetry is the input equal to the negative two. That a vertical line that crosses right in the middle of the curve. And that is the line of symmetry. You follow me? That is the line of symmetry. Okay, so 10, we have 10 minutes left. Let's do as much as we can. And uh, I, would leave, I will leave the rest of the work for you. Your, your homework is completing these and you will have a quiz to cover uh, these questions, okay? Because some of these questions, I trust you guys can do it. I trust you guys. I trust you guys can do it. So number ten, we're going to find x intercepts. Intercept. In this case, we have multiple. We have two. Okay. So how do we find what uh, x intercept? We set y equals zero. What is y? Y the output. So we set this guy equal to zero. Right. We set f of x equal to zero. Or you can also set this guy equal to zero. You guys see that? This, this is, this, these are the same sentences that are spoken differently. Okay, but which one do we use? We tend to use the latter one. Right? We tend to use the latter one. Okay, and then we solve this equation. We solve this equation for x, right? So this is f of x equals to zero. We said f of x equals zero, solving for x, solving for x. So adding x plus two squared on both sides, so we're gonna have x plus two squared, oops, sorry, squared equals to seven. Okay, how we get there? How do we get there? We added x plus two squared to both sides of the equation. To both sides of the equation. Okay, so then we're going to solve this in uh, this equation. Okay, how do we solve this equation? We're going to take square root on both sides. This is like a, an if statement, right? If x plus two squared is seven, the square root of the both sides will be still the same. And then we get, you know, we get into that routine that you guys by this time probably is very familiar with. I hope you guys are not bored, right? So equals to square root of seven, okay? And x plus two equals to plus minus square root of 
7. Right? And then in the end, when we subtract 2 on both sides, and we get a minus 2 plus or minus square root of 7. So we have two points of intersection, two points of x intercept. One is x sub 1, which is going to be negative 2 minus the square root of 7. OK, we have two numbers. And we have an x sub 2, we have a second number, which is going to be minus 2 plus square root of 7. And these two numbers will make the x intercepts. We finally got the x intercepts. Let's see what they are. Okay. Oops, sorry. Okay, we have x1, comma, 0, x2, comma, 0. So these points are not nice and neat anymore, right? They're not nice and neat anymore, but it worked. They are the x-intercepts. And we have two of them. So next, I'm going to put it in the in the graph. I'm going to put them in the graph. Okay, and we're going to put them in the graph. Okay, wait. Uh, yeah, so I'm sorry. So I'm going to put these two points in the graph, and you are going to work with me. Hold on. You are going to work with me to mark these points, okay? They're gonna be two dots. Two dots. Two dots on the X axis, okay? And everybody, please get involved, okay? So this point is gonna be Thinner. Okay. This is a negative two minus the square root of seven, comma zero. And this other point, a new dot, a negative two plus square root of seven, comma zero. That's the two x-intercepts. Okay, does everybody follow me? With these two points found, okay, I'm gonna do a little fast forward. I'm gonna do a little okay, fast forward. We're gonna skip 11 through 18. I'll leave those for you. I'll leave those for you. Okay, please do, please do them. Okay, did you guys mark those? Okay, so after you mark those, okay, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. I wanna jump to 20 as an example, 20 as an example. Okay, you guys, you guys are gonna do the rest. Okay, you guys are gonna do the rest. Now, I'm jumping to 20, then we're leaving the vertical cut, horizontal cut, vertical cut, horizontal cut, all to you for your homework, okay? Number 20, we want solve for x, that inequality, okay? And f of x, okay, f of x, equals to negative x squared uh, minus 4x minus 3. Is that plus 4x? Wait. Minus 4x. Hold on. You know, you, you could you guys change all of those plus to minus for 20, 21, 22, 23 for me? Okay. So please change 
I made a typo. Okay, so please change. All of those minus all plus 4x in 20, 21, 22, 23 to minus two, minus 4x. I made a mistake, okay? I didn't, I should have changed that to be consistent with the question that at hand, sorry. Okay, I apologize, okay? So, so solving that inequality, what I wish to emphasize here is that you're gonna be dealing with numbers that are so not so nice and neat, not so nice and neat, okay? So this is X1, this is X2, okay? This is X1, this is X2. So we want this, we want output to be positive. We want output to be positive, okay? So what will be the positive output? What input will make it a positive output? Obviously it's between these two numbers, right? And these two points should be circle. Okay, they should be circle. Another circle. So those points are in between because this piece is positive. This piece is positive, right? So just to complete this, so negative two minus root seven comma zero minus two plus root seven comma zero. Okay, I would make it thick. Oh, wait, what did I do? Oh, here. There, so that's a solution. So what will be the solution to that inequality here? Number 20, which is gonna be negative two minus root seven. Okay, watch out how we write it, how we write it, okay? And uh, this is gonna be less than X, less than negative two plus root seven. That's how we write it. Okay, so far so good, everybody? Okay, so X1 is this point, X2 is that point, okay? So this point is negative two minus root seven. The only difference is that we, we previously, we had, a, you know, nice and neat numbers like negative two, negative three, positive one. Now we have numbers that are not so nice and neat. Just use them as they are. Don't worry too much about it, okay? So this is just a that number, just that number, okay? Uh, in terms of marking, okay, in terms of marking, you can actually use notation X1, okay? For example, in this case, you probably could use negative five and here is 0 0.2. You can actually use X1. X2, if you have make a notation of X1, X2 explicitly, like, like we did here. You know, see here, I, I've defined X1, X2 in my, in my work, okay, in my work. So I can use those notations in my, um, in my, in my graph, okay? The key you need to understand is that, uh, so this is x1, uh, x2 comma zero, and that point is going to be, let's see, 1.2, and I'm gonna make the red, okay? So x2 comma zero, that's a little bit too squishy, and x1 comma zero, All right, so let's see how that goes. X1 comma zero seem to be fine. X2 comma zero, I need just to scoot over a little bit, right? So when we mark these, 
when we mark these, be careful that you make sure you, so this is x1 comma zero, x2 comma zero. So the solution for uh, f of x greater than zero will be between these two numbers. Or you can even use, if, if x1, x2 are well-defined, you can even use these notations. You can even use these notations. Okay, I'm gonna show you, okay? So this, you can write it as x sub one and this x, x sub two, provided you have specified what x1, x2s are. Is that clear? And of course, there are those, those are four cases. Now I want you guys to work them out. And you will have a quiz uh, this weekend, of course, for, for, for lectures this week. And uh, I hope you will discover your questions along the way you're studying. And I will see you guys on Monday. I will see you guys on Monday. Next week is week number eight. At the end of week number, uh, well, next week we will have a midterm exam. We're gonna have a midterm exam. So our midterm exam is on week number eight, okay? So we're gonna be examining you up to the point we have covered, we have covered, okay? So the exam will be, um, you know, I will, I'll have more information coming forward to you about the exam. Basically, you, you basically study all the materials and all the quizzes we have done this semester uh, by this time, okay, in the past seven weeks. And then you just work them, work them out, just work them out, okay? And I, I will see you guys on Monday and I wish you have a great, great day. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you.